This is video number four from digito-university.org uh, concerning various topics in quantum mechanics. In this video, we want to take a look at the uh, operator adjoint, and then that will segue us into the permission operator. And to get us started, let's just suppose that we have a linear operator, we'll say L, and it operates on a particular ket vector A. And when it does that, it transforms it into a different ket vector. We'll call that C. Now, let's say that we have, well, we're going to say that what happens if we have an operator that operates on the bra vector of A. And we'll call this operator, say, L dagger. So that when L dagger operates on the bra vector A, it gives us the bra vector C. Like this. But first, Get it, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because we really haven't defined what this is. Um, in terms of the um, Dirac's um, bracket notation, is that this is well defined. You usually have the operator to the left of the ket vector. But when you have the operator to the right of the bra vector, what exactly does that mean? And we can uh, define this type of operation, let's say that we have a bra vector, say, S. And it's being operated on by a particular linear operator. What exactly does that mean? Okay, to help us define this, this is where we invoke, once again, the identity operator which we established in video number one. And that's this. Where these are, the ends are orthonormal basis vectors. And this is being summed over to some variable. We can call this any variable we want. It's just a dummy variable of uh, summation. But as we established in the first video, this is the identity operator. So, Let's rewrite this invoking the identity operator. And what kind of expression would we have? So we'd have that this would be equal to the sum over n of this and then we would have this. we would have that common expression. Well here, we have the linear operator L operating on a ket vector. The ket vector is a particular basis vector. But when the linear operator operates on a ket vector, it gives us a different type of ket vector. So we'll just call this, say, ket vector D. So we can rewrite the expression. This will now equal the sum over n. And here we have our bra vector s. Now we have the ket vector d, like this. And then we have this bra vector n left over. Well, here, this is an inner product now between s and d and you take the inner product, it gives you some number. Uh, when we're doing quantum mechanics, it probably will be a complex number. But this gives a number, we'll just call it alpha. So what we end up with then is Oops, you wrote this wrong. This is a bra vector. 
we end up with the bra vector, the bra orthonormal basis vectors being multiplied by some number. So that is what we mean then, that's the official definition when you have the linear operator operating on a bra vector. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to ask this question. If we have the linear operator L that operates on the ket vector A to give a different ket vector C, now we have another linear operator operating on the bra vector A to give the bra vector C. Well, if we know what this is, then can we figure out what this is? After all, this bra vector is just really the complex conjugate of this ket vector. So it seems like it shouldn't be that difficult to determine if you know what this is, what does this have to be? So what we can do is let's take this expression here and take the inner product of it with any other bra vector b, so we have it like this. So we have this expression. Now what we can say is, but this operating on A gives us the ket vector C. So this would be the same thing as the inner product of B and C. Now what about this expression right here? Well again, let's take then the inner product of this with, not with ket vector b, yes with ket vector b, let's do it like that. So we have it like this. We have L dagger and then we have ket vector b. But now this is bra vector C. So this will equal this. And now we look at these two expressions and we see that these are just complex conjugates of each other. That This is the basic um, Dirac Brockett notation is that when you have this vector over here you're taking the complex conjugate of it, and when you have the bra vector and now it's a ket vector, you're taking the complex conjugate of it. So what we have then is that this is equal to the complex conjugate of this. Remember, if we have two numbers, uh, say A plus IB, its complex conjugate is A minus IB. Now, if I take the complex conjugate of the complex conjugate, that takes us right back to our original expression. And this is the complex conjugate of this. So if I take the complex conjugate of it, I end up back with this expression, just like we did right here. So let's see where that leaves us. What we can say then is that this is equal to the complex conjugate of this. So we have is equal to the complex conjugate of this. L dagger B.
So we've derived this expression. And this is what is meant by the adjoint of an operator. This, if you look at most textbooks, this will be the official definition of it. But really, what does this imply? What does this tell us? Well, first, let's imagine then that instead of taking the inner product um, with B, suppose we just take the inner product with A. So here then, if we do that, we would have from here, A, L dagger, or not L dagger, just L operator, equals this, A, L dagger, A, complex conjugate. Now, remember when you're multiplying two complex numbers together, say z1 and z2, and you want to hit the complex conjugate of that product, that's equal to the complex conjugate of z1 times the complex conjugate of z2. So here, The complex conjugate of this would be, well, the complex conjugate of this is its bra vector. The complex conjugate of this is its ket vector. So that's, we would just be rewriting it like this, A, ignore that for the moment, A, okay, we switch these two around, big deal, it doesn't do anything for us, plus we'd also have the complex conjugate of this. So here we would have L dagger complex conjugate. So that sort of that implies then that our original linear operator L equals this complex conjugated. We need the complex conjugate of both sides of the equation, and we would have so this would seem to indicate that what we were seeking for, trying to find an expression of this in terms of this, that this is just the complex conjugate of it. But actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And this is only like half the story. So let's see. Let's see if we can erase some of this stuff. And let's go to the top part here. And let's write it like this. Here, we were just using ket vectors A and B in our expressions. Well, now, instead of using just ket vectors A and B, let's use the basis vectors for these linear operators. And all basis vectors that we're using, uh, we're using ones that are orthonormal. So here, then, what we would have, instead of using A and B, what we would have is m, one of our basis vectors, l, n. And that is equal to m, l dagger, and complex conjugate. OK, but this, as we noted in video number two, if we're expressing the linear operator in matrix form, this is L, M, N. 
Okay, these are basis vectors now that L is operating with. On this side, and we did not write this correctly because here we had B A A B, so this should be N M. on this side. So N L dagger M. So this would be equal to L dagger complex conjugate N M. Or take the complex conjugate of both sides and we have L M N complex conjugate equals L dagger N M. So what this is telling us is that the L dagger that we were seeking is the co complex conjugate but also the N's and M's are reversed. So if this was written in a matrix form, remember the inner number is the row, the outer number is the column. Here, those are switched around. So if we had it in matrix form, say as, just to use a three by three matrix, say that the linear operator L was represented like this, And assume these are complex numbers now. So if this is the matrix representation for operator L, then for its adjoint, L dagger, this is a row. This has to be a column now. So we'd have A, 1, 1, a, 1, 2, A, 1, 3, and we have to take the complex conjugates. Like this. Then for here we would have, that row is now a column, A, 2, 1, A, 2, 2, A, 2, 3, plus we have to take the complex conjugates. And same thing, this third row becomes the third column. And take the complex conjugate. So that finally then tells us how to find L dagger. If this is the matrix representation of the linear operator L, then transpose the rows into columns, take the complex conjugates, and there we have L dagger. Okay, um, hopefully that made some sense. What we want to do in the next video is talk about a special type of adjoint, the Hermitian adjoint. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion.